Welcome to DIYEasyCrafts.com. This is a product review of the Devil Forge. This is a gas forge, propane forge. Comes all the way from Lithuania. The company, uh, which can be found on the web at www.devil-forge.com, makes a variety of different forges. They make single burner, double burner, triple burner for, uh, forges. They make them with doors, without doors, just a variety of products that are available. Um, I decided on a two burner forge with a single door. And in this video, we're going to show you the initial setup of the forge and just how good they work. Basically, it took about two weeks from the time that I ordered it um, until the product was received. It was packaged very well. It's a fairly heavy little unit. Packed with styrofoam. All of the additional components are there. The regulator, um, it comes with uh, the hose that connects the regulator to the propane bottle. comes with fire bricks and that's the body of the forge. It does come with an instruction sheet, very simple. Basically you start by laying the fire bricks on the floor of the forge and you have to push the insulation in a little bit to get them to sit flat. The next part of the assembly is just going to be to put together um, the adapter on the regulator to attach the hose. And the hose just gets pressed onto that nipple then and secured with um, a hose clamp which is also provided. You can tighten up on those hose clamps just with a screwdriver. Um, I like to snug them up with a screwdriver and then I do put a wrench on them. Now the burner assembly, the other end of the hose attaches to the top of the burner assembly. There's only one place it can go. Uh, this is a press fit. Sometimes you just have to twist that hose a little bit to get it to slide into place. And again, this also gets secured with a hose clamp. And on that assembly, if you, if you take a look, there's also a, a valve. Uh, that's to turn one burner off. So you can use this thing, either one burner on or two burners on. The instruction sheet says to mount the burners um, flush to the bottom edge. Now the correct mounting position for this particular forge, uh, it has a crossbar that runs from burner to burner. The crossbar should be flush with the top of the forge. So you can basically just drop these tubes in until that crossbar is actually resting on the tubes mounted to the forge. And then once those burners are correctly positioned and that the uh, inside edge is also then flush with the uh, inside edge of the insulation on the forge, you can just tighten down the three bolts on each of the burners. Now the choke is on top of each one of those tubes. They recommend about eight millimeters of space. Uh, this is not a critical dimension. Um, you know, basically you just want to leave, you know, a quarter inch or more uh, to begin with. And then you can adjust this once you get the forge started. Uh, the more air you have, the darker blue the flame will be. You don't want a really dark blue flame. You want to just uh, adjust that choke down so that the, the flame is just lightly blue. Uh, in the box also came some additional insulation. I found that if you if just peel this and make it thinner, this has to be packed around um, each one of those burners. I just packed it in there with a screwdriver.
Now the regulator does come with an adapter. The adapter screws onto the propane tank and then the regulator uh, screws onto the adapter. This is the first time I'm going to fire up the forge. So as with most things, there's certainly a little bit of a learning curve. All right, put the propane on. You actually have to dial the regulator to the right in order to increase the pressure. And then using a um, barbecue lighter, I'm going to come in from the side and light it. Now there's quite a bit of a, of a dragon's breath out of the back of this forge. And, and what I mean by that is, is heat and flames do come out uh, the open end of the forge. So you really have to be careful uh, of using this thing where you have it placed and what you have it placed next to. That's the front door on the forge. Just as a demonstration, I'm holding this uh, piece of wood, you know, four or five inches behind the forge, and it, it chars very quickly. What I did was I took an old barbecue stand. I mounted uh, some cement board to the top. It already had a propane bottle holder underneath it, and it becomes a movable forge stand. So now I've kind of uh, figured out how I'm going to go through the lighting process. Um, I've got the propane on, but I've got the regulator turned off. I light the barbecue lighter, and then I crank the regulator to give it some pressure. And this way, there's no time for any propane to build up inside of the forge. Then I can just increase the pressure to the working pressure that I want to use. The neat thing about having uh, the hardy backer or the cement board is there's also nothing on this stand for that forge to burn. I can adjust the choke now, and I can adjust that just so that you have a light blue flame. It's really hard to see the colors on this video because I'm outdoors and the sunlight, etc. I also highly recommend getting a pair of um, heat resistant gloves. I picked these up just on eBay. A friend of mine, Jason Northgard, is a blacksmith. He lent me a couple of uh, long tongs um, and even gave me a ring for the back of the tongs uh, to hold them clamped so that I could actually let go of that tong and it still wouldn't release on the knife blade. Now what I'm doing here is I'm going to use this forge for heat treating. You could certainly use the same forge uh, you know, for forging metal, for heating it up and, and hammering it out on an, on an anvil. Um, I'm just going to use it for heat treating. I'm going to put the blade in there edge down. I want the thickest portion of that blade against the burner or having the heat um, on it. And I'm going to slowly move it back and forth. Now one thing I noticed right, you know, pretty quickly is that even though I've got the body of the blade uh, on the first burner, the tip of the blade was going into the hottest portion of the second burner. So on these smaller knives, I really don't even need both burners running. Um, and in fact, in a couple of minutes here, I, I kind of figure that out and I turn one of the burners off. That's that little valve right in between both, uh, both of the burners. So now I've only got one burner. It's much easier to control. Um, if the tip starts getting a little bit too hot, I can just push it forward out of the burner. And I want to bring this metal up to a point where it's non-magnetic. The additional thing that I did was I, I put a magnet on the side of the forge door so that once I get the, the blade up to temperature, I can check that it's non-magnetic by just taking the blade and placing it right up against that magnet. If it doesn't stick, I know I've got it hot enough. So this was at the non-magnetic stage. I'm going to go back into the burner reheat it just to make sure that it's that same color throughout the whole consistency of the heat throughout the entire blade, the portion that I want to heat treat. And after I leave it in there for a few seconds, it's going to come out and get quenched in an oil tank. Now I did that real time and I was kind of playing around 
uh, with the forge and with the learning curve. But even with all that said, that whole process only took about two minutes. Another look, I ended up doing two or three blades the first night I started this thing up. To say the very least, I was very, very impressed with this little forge. Really did a nice job. Heated up the blades very quickly. It was controllable. I highly recommend the product. Uh, take a look at their website, uh, www.devil-forge.com. Like I said before, they make single burner, double burner, triple burner forges. I'm sure they'll have something that fits your requirements. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Please also check us out on the web at DIYEasyCrafts.com. We've got a variety of knife making videos there. And in addition to that, I'd like to invite you to our Facebook group, Knives and Knife Making. Just search Facebook for Knives and Knife Making, uh, join the group, and please post some pictures of your own images, of your own uh, knife builds. Thank you very much.